Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new research that shows that maybe dark energy doesn't actually exist. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So in many videos in the past I've talked about uh, the mystery of dark energy, something that we still don't really understand very well, something that implies that the universe is consistently and constantly expanding and accelerating, and basically as if something was pushing things away from each other. As of now we think that up to about 74 to maybe even 75% of the entire universe is dark energy. But this new research and this new analysis uh, from, well, essentially several scientists, but specifically here, the lead author for this study is David Wiltshire from University of Canterbury in New Zealand, implies that, um, well, we might actually just misunderstand the universe a little bit. In other words, dark energy might not actually be real. And he does something really simple to explain it. So first of all, we think that uh, we, we, or we thought that dark energy existed because of the data from different type 1a supernova across the universe that we assumed had the uh, same kind of luminosity across the universe. And uh, having looked at it, we realized that things seem to be moving farther and farther apart. In other words, they were accelerating because the uh, the redshift that occurred farther away from our own um, solar system, our own galaxy, seemed to be more extreme the farther away you go from, the, from, from Earth, from uh, Milky Way. But the real universe seems to have a far more complicated structure. It's not just the universe and uniform as we imagine it. It has a lot of galaxies inside, it has a lot of galaxy clusters, it has a lot of super clusters, and a lot of things like, for example, the Gray Attractor that we still don't understand. And this huge, huge cosmic web of giant sheets of filament um, essentially creates uh, a variety of complexity in the universe, which implies that certain locations around the universe might not display exactly the same physics that we might expect in our own galaxy. And so in other words, if you go across the universe and you look at these type 1a supernova, which are usually known as cosmic candles because they seem to have very, 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 very similar luminosity to each other, it might actually be more correct to say that their luminosity is not actually same in other parts of the universe. And in other words, uh, we currently don't really understand the actual structure of the universe, which is why we thought that there is dark energy. So um, in the same way that you can usually kind of tell how far away you are um, from like, for example, a street light in a dark, on a dark street, uh, you know the actual brightness of a street light and you, you know what it might look like next to you. So you can kind of estimate the distance by looking at another one farther away in universe, it might actually be very different. As a matter of fact, imagine that you were in a very foggy conditions, very unusual conditions with a lot of mountains around you. And so one street light um, might actually look very different from another street light, um, even if they were the same street lights. So by looking at a street light farther away, the luminosity of it might actually not help you determine the distance at all. And so there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding to our universe, kind of similar to how Einstein actually used to think that the universe was unchanging and uh, he tried to apply a lot of various constants to his own um, uh, general and special theory of relativity. And he invented this so-called cosmological constant and until the last days of his life, he actually referred to it as the biggest blunder of his life because he couldn't really understand it very well. And if Einstein couldn't under really understand it back in the days, well, you can imagine that even today we're still having trouble figuring things out. So this idea never really gone away. It keeps reappearing and we keep trying to explain these strange observations with new concepts and uh, seem to be inventing new things, calling them dark, but not really explaining what's going on in there. 
And what's even more uh, interesting is that we, we currently actually use a very ancient or I guess very old theories of physics to try to explain the universe. Uh, back in 1922, a Russian physicist by the name of Friedman used Einstein's field equation and he developed this um, interesting concept of the expansion of space in, in a universe where everything is the same. And this was known as the Friedman's equation and it, it assumes that the expansion is identical everywhere. So in other words, the universe has no complicating structure. Now, that's not actually true. We know today that it's not true because universe and space and time always kind of fold and bend based on the matter present there, based on the, the possible dark matter present there. And uh, today we have this new model known as Lambda Cold Dark Matter um, model that seems to explain it a little bit better. So the universe that we know is not actually homogenous. It's, it seems to be different depending on where you go. So there is a lot of gravitational instabilities. There's a lot of variations in gravities due to uh, things present there, like for example, galaxies and clusters of galaxies. And because of this, uh, the actual cosmic candles, the Type 1A supernova, would actually appear differently uh, if we were to look at them from, from Earth. So in other words, you can kind of imagine the universe as this vast, vast, vast cosmic web uh, full of empty spaces, empty voids. And around them, there's these sheets of galaxies and dark matter, and all of it is kind of all mixed and looks nothing like we thought it looked 100 years ago. And they actually propose a new type of a model as well, which would be referred to as timescape cosmology, and uh, where there is really no dark energy. Instead, it basically includes these variations in gravity caused by the uh, what they would refer to as lumpiness in the structure of our universe. So in other words, the time space, the actual clock itself, uh, would actually behave differently depending on the location you would be located in, in the universe. So if you go somewhere far, far away from the Milky Way, you might end up experiencing different uh, time space. And obviously you wouldn't detect it because you would be in that frame of reference, but uh, the if you were to look back at uh, our own Milky Way, things would look very different to you from how they looked when you were still there. And assuming that Dr. Wiltshire is correct in his assumption, and also assuming that we've been thinking about this problem wrong this whole time, uh, we also need to then rethink uh, Type 1A supernova in general, because they might not be as perfect candles as we think they are. And we also might need to actually consider rethinking uh, the actual structure of the universe and how we think about it. Because as human beings, it's actually kind of difficult to imagine something as complex as the web of the universe and cosmos itself. But uh, this is essentially the reason we need to start thinking about it in very different terms. Because maybe just maybe there is no dark energy. Maybe this is all just a miscalculation on our part. Now, whether this is true or not, we're going to find out sometime in the future, but for now, this is all we know, and this is all we think we know about the universe. In other words, we know very, very little, and we seem to be wrong about it all the time. Anyway, once we find out something else, I'll make a video about it, so come back tomorrow and possibly learn something else about space, sciences, or something else you might have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And maybe consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me grow and make better videos. And, well, anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.